And we are back having a mighty fine conversation with Tony Ward winner, Levi Christ on a special edition of Out and About Today. All right, Levi, so we've been, we were talking about Southern Baptist Sissies and yeah. it led you to LA and that kind of thing and, and stained glass window. And you know, you're such a performer, just, you're just a natural performer. Eventually you end up in New York how did Million Dollar Quartet happen? It's, you know, it really is an unconventional story, and I'm going to try to fly through it, because when I first moved to L.A., actually, I've told you about Southern Baptist Sissies, but my first week in Los Angeles, I saw a Backstage West laying on the floor. I didn't know what it was, but I thumbed through it. I figured I knew what a cattle call was. I'd never heard of this thing called Rent, but I love soaking up the energy of a new city by just jumping in when I first get there, and I thought, I'm a singer-songwriter. I've never thought about this acting thing, but you know what? I'm going to go on an audition, a cattle call. Uh -huh. I was 169th in line, just as friendly as could be, talking to everybody. <laughs> um, and I went in there and I sang, I Can't Make You Love Me. And five callbacks later, they cast me as the role of Roger in the Broadway National Tour of Rent for wow. a three-month contract. But it was enough to start the curiosity with acting. I immediately came back to L.A. and enrolled myself into, into uh, classes with Warner Laughlin, auditioned, got in. You may not know Warner, but you know my classmates, Amy Adams and Ryan Reynolds takes from her, Matt Bomer. It was just a wealth mm, of mm. like talent in the sure. room. And my first gig uh, off of film was, was film after that, but, but coming back to stage was a beautiful musical called One Red Flower, which was about five guys in their one year tour of duty in Vietnam. We workshopped it all the way from Issaquah, Washington to Kennedy Center and was lined up for a theater ready to make my Broadway debut as this incredible juicy character that any actor would love to play. Just the layers, the arc to this character uh, that I played was, was remarkable. Uh, that was August of uh, 19, uh, August of 2001 and then 9-11 happened. Mm. And so the producers pulled out, everyone said, we can't do this right now. So what we all thought was going to be that Broadway debut moment right. uh, was d didn't work out in the weirdest of timings, but it was the same producers that said, hey, you know, I know this is disappointing, but I got this little script here and, and we just want to play around with it and I can give you a $50 gift card at Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf <laughs> if you come do it. And I heard you play the piano a little bit. <laughs> little did they know. Uh -huh. So I went for a workshop and I sat there and we did a table read and another table read later on for a hundred dollars uh, grocery shopping. Was it shopping. called Million Dollar Quartet then? It was always okay. called Million Dollar Quartet. Okay. It was always called Million Dollar Quartet, but they just didn't know how to tell the story of Sam Phillips. It took a lot of working. So that was 2004. We didn't get it on stage until 2007 at Issaquah Theater. Um, and then of course uh, Chicago after that. And then when they said that this little thing was going to go to Broadway, I, honestly, I didn't believe it'd have legs. Really? After One Red Flower, which is such a remarkable story by uh, Emmy Award winning writer and director uh, Paris Barclay, mm -hmm. oh, um, wonderful, wow. I thought to myself, well, this is just, you know, Whoa, is this, you think this is going to go to Broadway? <laughs> I and then no it goes to Broadway and becomes a I smash. I have, you just, it just goes to show, uh, uh, you know, when you think you've got plans for yourself, sometimes the universe has another plan. Right. You know? and so you go, you're playing Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah. I mean, what better person than for you to play Jerry Lee Lewis? Just incredible. You have this incredible run, and then the Tonys happen. So yeah. let's take a look at Tony Night oh, right yes, now. So, okay, and we'll talk about it on okay. the backside. Okay. <laughs> the wonderful nominees for Best Performance by Featured actor in a musical are Kevin Chamberlain, The Adams Family. Robin De Jesus, La Cajafo. Christopher Fitzgerald, Finian's Rainbow. Levi Christ, Million Dollar. American Theatre Wing's Tony Award goes to Levi Christ, Million Dollar Quartet. With his Broadway debut, Levi Christ wins the Tony in addition to acting in Million Dollar Quartet. He also contributed some of the arrangements. Uh, wow. Wow. Powerful. So what goes through your mind when you, you look back on that? Goodness gracious. <laughs> my gosh, that year was the fastest year of my life. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know, it, 
I don't know. I think when I think when life gets that fast and the exposure gets that large, uh, you begin to really discover where your roots are, where your love and your life is, where your support system is. And mm -hmm. I tell you, that was uh, that was not that was the first year me and my partner were together and boy we were thrown into the fire with yeah. uh, some incredible like I mean it's incredible it's good it's positive it's wonderful but you really realize like well it's it's you and me kid we're we're two of us against the world that's what I think about when I look at that oh wow yeah. just just so much that's just you know to, to get there get a Tony be sitting in that audience yeah I mean it just yeah. must have <clears throat> well, I didn't I had no idea I, I know that my, my partner and a lot of people who were making predictions I know this now but I've always been a hundred percent don't show me reviews mm -hmm. I don't want to know predictions I do not want to know if people are saying anything good because then I'll play to it if they say something bad I'll be insecure about it it's just not a pure way to perform don't let me see them and so I, somehow the theater everyone in the theater my partner everyone managed to keep me entirely <laughs> ignorant the whole time and, and I loved it because yeah. it made the moment when it really happened like really pure for me because yeah. I honestly just did not know wow that is just incredible um, all right so we want to talk a little bit about um, and we can start talking about it and then we may have to take a break but when you came to Nashville, you had some, uh, we're kind of going back in time, because I want to talk yeah. about your journey to coming out. You talked about conversion ther therapy, um, all of that, so. I mean, it starts with gospel music for me, because I always, I've always believed that music and art is, uh, and, and I think that Del Shores is a great example of this and what he does. It's, 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 it's a, it's a um, being a conduit for something that's greater than ourselves. It's not about performing at you. It's not about this facade that I create in hopes that you like me. It is about being a channel for something that is healing. I've always believed that as a kid. Um, and all I ever wanted to do was gospel music growing up and of course I found out when I was eight years old that I was I was different and I and I remember hearing the word abomination often at church and I remember the one particular Sunday afternoon I looked it up when I came home and realized how ugly I was when I read the definition and knew what the pastor was talking about right. and I remember making that agreement at eight years old that I am an abomination to God I am I am I am a you know abhorrent in his sight Okay, and, I'm, I'm, and we're going to break right here, and then we're going to talk about it right after this. You got so, it. Um, you got it. Yeah, some uh, serious stuff to talk about. Uh, we're in a conversation yeah. with Levi Christ. More right after this. You're watching out about today.